Welcome to the Polymers Lab with Professor Brumbaugh, and I'm going to walk you through most of the steps for this lab so that you can see how they work. And we're going to start first with the making polymer section. We're going to make three different types of polymers, aka slime. We're going to make glarch, gloop, and oobleck. Now, before we can get started, uh, especially to make glarch and gloop, we're going to need to make some ingredients. So uh, to make the ingredient, the first one, we're going to need our school glue, our white glue, and we're going to need a quarter cup of it so that we have enough glue to get started. And there we go. It's got a little cap in it. So uh, go out and measure out a quarter cup of glue. Now, your glue might be kind of runny, but it's not runny enough. So that's why we're going to dilute it. So you want to let as much of that glue pour down into your measuring cup as possible. And we're going to dilute it by adding again a quarter cup but this time a quarter cup of water and just plain tap water is fine it doesn't have to be like di uh, distilled water or anything like that and uh, the water being cold is okay does not have to be hot water so quarter cup of glue added to it with a quarter cup of cold water You'll want to make sure to wash out your measuring cup really well. Uh, the glue kind of can stick to it. You don't want to wait too long to clean out your cup because you're going to get glue stuck into it. You can peel it out later, but you know, rather than do that, just go ahead and wash it out real good. So mix up your glue really well. Should mix together pretty good. Now you can try this with clear glue, but it tends not to work quite as well. The white glue seems to work the best. Um, it has the better polymer uh, pieces in it for what we're doing. So you can see there, we've got what looks like, kind of like milk. So we've got our white glue that's diluted down. So the next thing that we're going to need to do is put that white glue into a Ziploc bag. So take your Ziploc bag, you wanna label it just so you can make sure that you can keep track of which one is which. So I'm gonna make the Glarch first because we don't have to uh, mix up any additional ingredients for that. So you're gonna add four teaspoons of your diluted glue to your bag. And it doesn't have to be exact, but as close as possible. Sorry, I didn't realize I was off screen there. So I've added four teaspoons into my bag so you can see about how much that is. Uh, if you want to make more, you can. You should have enough starch in your bottle to make more. Uh, I would recommend starting off with a small amount just to make sure that you have enough starch in case you need extra. So you're going to, after you add um, that um, glue, if you have food coloring and would like to make your um, slime a color this is the time to add the food coloring I'm not going to add any food coloring to mine uh, just because I want to show you what it looks like without the food coloring in it sorry I'm rinsing off my spoon so if you're going to use the same measuring spoon to measure the starch and the glue make sure you wash them off really well in between so I've got my clean measuring spoon got my bag with my glue in it now what I'm going to do is take my starch. So in your uh, kits, you should have a bottle that looks like this, labeled starch, or maybe li labeled liquid starch. I can't remember which one we labeled it. 
It should have a screw top on it, so you can just unscrew it. And then you're gonna measure two teaspoons of liquid starch in. And again, rinse off your uh, measuring spoon. And you're going to, as you can see there in the directions, mix by squishing. So it's really technical. You're gonna mix these two together by squishing them around. So just squish them in the baggie. Uh, what we're wanting to do is mix the two together so they will create polymer chains. So we need to get that starch into the white glue so that it will make the polymer. And fairly quickly, you should start to see that it's no longer liquid, but this kind of webby type material. So once it's that webby type material, you know that it's actually working. Um, you wanna make sure you wanna keep mixing it until all the liquid has been mixed in and is part of that web. You might have a few bubbles around, that's okay. Now it may be kind of sticky at this point. So you can open it up. Um, now you can see mine's not sticking to the bag. That's actually a good sign uh, because if it's sticking to the bag, that means you have too much glue. Um, at this point, it looks like I may have a little too much starch, which is okay uh, because I've got those bubbles in the bag. So open it up and feel it. You can pick it up and if it's not sticky but kind of slimy, that's, that means that it's good. Um, if you do have extra starch in the bag, what you can do is actually add a little bit more glue and that can soak up some of that starch and you can just kind of do this back and forth um, until you get it all mixed up. The key is you don't want it to be sticky so it sticks to your hands. You'd rather it be slimy and you don't want it to stick to your hands. You don't want it to stick to the bag. Um, if it's too sticky, so if it's sticking to your hands and to the bag, if you can see in the directions, um, you can add a little bit more of the starch to the bag, just a little bit at a time until it's not sticking anymore. So this still probably has a little, little more starch in the bag than we need, but that's okay. This is what your slime should look like. And so you can knead it, um, once you knead it and warm it up, it will act like the full slime. Uh, like I said, it's, this one probably has a little too much starch in it, so you can keep adding glue um, if it's too slippery <laughs> like that to hold on to. Um, you can add a little more glue or you can even just uh, tap it with a paper towel to get that extra starch off so it'll be a little easier uh, to handle. You don't want to, um, you know, put a lot of pressure on it with a paper towel because it will stick but this is what the gloop should look like or I'm sorry this is glarch so um, that's uh, the glarch so I'll put that over to the side um, you want to make sure if you're going to keep it uh, for any amount of time to make sure that the um, bag is zipped up and um, that'll keep it from drying out and we're back I'm done cleaning up so I washed the starch off my hands washed my measuring cup because we're going to need that again and I still have a little bit of <laughs> glue or glarch stuck to the table but that's all right so we're going to make the gloop now. Now, before we make gloop, uh, we're going to need to mix up sodium tetraborate solution. 
So sodium tetraborate solution, you're going to need the little Ziploc bag out of your kit that's labeled borax. Now we already pre-measured yours, so it already has that heaping teaspoon or one and a half teaspoons of borax powder in it. So you're gonna to wanna to empty it into a container like I have here. So I already dumped mine out. And then you're going to take a quarter cup of warm water. So this time it does need to be warm water. And you're gonna add that quarter cup of warm water and this is why it's really important to make sure that you clean this out uh, if you're using the same quarter cup measuring cup uh, because we don't want any glue in it to start with. So pour in that quarter cup of warm water with your borax and stir it up. Now there's going to be extra borax left over. You want to stir it until a good amount of it has dissolved. So there will be some borax left in the bottom. It doesn't dissolve really, really well. But you got to have enough of that in your packet, in your little zippy bag, uh, to make sure that you have enough of it dissolved in solution for what we need. All right. So that looks pretty good. So um, should hopefully be able to see that. Um, if you look, about half of my borax has uh, dissolved. That's about right. So um, yours might dissolve a little bit better, a little bit worse, but you want to have at least half of it uh, dissolve. So I'm going to set that over here. And we're going to get another Ziploc bag ready. So that way we can't, we won't confuse the two. So the first one was Glarch. This one is Gloop. And uh, gloop is like our first slime, the one we made with liquid starch. We're gonna use our glue mixture again, but this time we're gonna use that sodium tetraborate to make the polymer instead of the starch. So same sort of procedure. You're going to get your glue mixture. You might wanna stir it up a little bit before you use it just in case it may have separated a little bit and measure out those four teaspoons. Four. Now on this one, if you wanna double the recipe, you definitely can because you made plenty of sodium tetraborate solution. So um, if you wanna make extra, you can. Like I said, you've got plenty of um, glue, so Make sure, because you're going to use that same teaspoon, make sure that your teaspoon is cleaned off well. So I'm washing my teaspoon off. Because we want to make sure that there's no glue in that teaspoon before we use it. All right. So now what we're going to do instead of, so with the starch, we added two teaspoons of the solution. This time we're just going to need one. Now you want to make sure that it's full. So make sure you got a nice full teaspoon and add that to your zippy bag. You can set that aside. And same as before, zip it up and you're going to mix by squish. So it's easier, um, I don't know if you noticed uh, before, I made it all go down into one corner. It's easiest if you scoot it all to one corner and then mix it there. That way you're not trying to chase it around the bag. Just like with the Glarch, fairly quickly you should start to see it get solid. Now this time it's not going to be webby. Um, it's going to be more slimy, more solid. So, you know, kind of roll it around, squish it around. Um, it may get a little sticky and stretchy, but again, you're looking for it to not stick to the bag. Okay? Uh, if it does uh, stick, just like with the uh, Glarch, 
just add a tiny bit, just a couple of drops of the sodium tetraborate solution into the bag and squish it again. This looks like it's pretty good. So you can open it up and pull it out. That's great. You can use it to pull any of the pieces off if you can get them off of the baggie. Sometimes they'll come off, sometimes they won't. Um, so that you can get one big blob. This stuff kind of reminds me of flexible eraser. Uh, it's quite a different feeling from the Glarch. So there is what you should have as far as gloop. So once you've got that mixed up, go ahead and seal it back up in its bag. Again, you can keep this one for a little bit of time. As long as you keep it sealed up in the bag, you can get it back out and play with it. Now we're going to move to our last slime, which is called Ooblek. And for this one, you're going to need a dish. And I've got... A little casserole dish that I dug up. Um, this just gives you a nice surface area to be able to work in. There's some gunk in it. There we go. So you can see mine's blue. I picked blue just so you could see the, um, the oobleck better. So what you're going to do with the oobleck, this is the one that you need the cornstarch for. So this one is just cornstarch and water. So you're going to get your cornstarch out and you're going to measure about a cup. So it doesn't, again, have to be exact. So that's pretty good. So pour a cup of cornstarch into your dish. So your dish does need to be big enough to hold at least more than a cup um, and be able to stir in it. So you've got a cup of cornstarch and you're going to add a quarter cup of water. Um, that's the starting point. Now you may end up needing more water and that's okay. So I've got my water in a little squeeze bottle. So we're going to start with a quarter cup and add that in. And the cornstarch is going to soak up the water pretty quickly. Uh, you can mix this with your hands. However, as you may notice, cornstarch sticks to everything. I've, I'm wearing black today. It's all over my clothes. So start stirring. And you can see that I'm definitely going to need more water because you still got big lumps, big chunks. What we want is it for it to be a little more liquidy. So I'm going to add some more water. We don't want to add it in huge amounts, though, uh, because we don't want to go too far. We can fix it if we put too much in. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put in about an eighth of a cup. See what that does. Because if we put in too much water, you fix it by putting in a little bit more cornstarch. But that game can get really old because you can keep playing the little bit of this, a little bit of that for quite a while. Okay, so we still have quite a bit of powder. Let's do another eighth. So you can see when the water hits some of this, it starts to melt. That's where, what we're headed for. We want this to kind of be melty. So. It will be hard to stir, and that's part of what we want to look at. If you have any big clumps like you see here, Kind of squish them with your spoon. We want to work the water into those. So, so far I've put in a total of a half a cup of water. Like I said, we want to start with that quarter cup and then start working our way towards adding more. All right. So let's see if we've got it. We're getting there. 
which is still a little stiff. So now this is where you can just add little tiny bits, little splashes. I know some people don't like that because you'd rather have exact measurements, but unfortunately, cornstarch does have a mind of its own. If you've ever cooked with it, you may be familiar with that. This is the stuff that we use to uh, do things like thicken gra gravy and so forth. So what you're doing here, cornstarch is actually a polymer on its own. Um, what you're doing is using the water to link those polymers into bigger polymers from the powder version. All right, looks like it might be close because I have some air bubbles in here now. All right, oh yeah. So if you, you know you're at the point where you're supposed to be if you take a spoon and see what I'm doing here, you spoon it up and it runs. But if you take your spoon or your finger and run it through there, it tears. See how it gets a tear to it. It's very stiff. If you run your finger through it, it does the same thing. All right, that's what you want. If you pick it up and squeeze it, it should get solid. Mine's a little runny, so I'm gonna actually add a little bit more cornstarch to it. I think I went a little too far on the water. Um, so it's just playing with it until it gets to that right consistency. And you know, you get to play with cornstarch. Now, uh, this stuff, if it does get all over the place, cornstarch, um, it's actually pretty easy to clean up um, because all you have to do is vacuum it up. Uh, so even if you get the oobleck version of it, the wet version of it somewhere, just let it dry out. It won't take very long and then you can brush it up or vacuum it up. There we go. So now we've got it. See that tear even better now. So that's the kind of thing that you're looking for is where it gets stiff when you run your finger through it, but then it turns back into that liquid. All right, so that is the three slimes. So you now have Glarch, Gloop, and Oobleck to play with. And what you wanna do now is compare them. So go to the table in your lab and compare their appearance. So what do they look like? Are they shiny? Are they dull? So for what do they feel like? Um, so what kind of texture do they have? Do they bounce? Now you can't bounce the oobleck, so that's why those are blacked out for the bounce and the stretch because you can't pick up oobleck and you know drop it. Um, and then what happens when you smack them? And then when, what kind of strength is needed to break them when they uh, when you stretch them? Uh, and then do take pictures of your slimes and stick them in your document. So that way I can take a look at your slimes. I like to see these. Uh, they're kind of fun. Uh, you can, like I said, you can keep them and play with them. Um, they will eventually start to mold. Oobleck will dry out uh, because it's, you know, just cornstarch and water. Welcome back. And this is the plastic bag activity. So you might notice that my work area looks a little different. Uh, it's a different color because it is now a bin. This section you want to do over a sink or a trash can. So I've already got my Ziploc bag and I've put water in it. Now your directions tell you to fill the Ziploc bag two thirds of the way. So I didn't fill all of mine all of the way just because I'm working up in my um, office area and I didn't want to, tr you know, I wanted to avoid trying to get as, you know, things as wet as little. So we've got the sealed Ziploc bag with the water in it. And what you're gonna do is either have bamboo skewers like these guys 
So these would be like the things you'd use to make kebabs. And I've got two different sizes. I have a thicker one and I have thinner ones. Now, if you use these, uh, I pulled this one out to show you, you want to avoid ones that have these kinds of splinters on them. So don't, don't use any of them that have big splinters of any sort on them. Uh, it'll cause problems with your experiment. You can also use sharpened pencils. You want to get them as sharp as you can. My sharpener will only sharpen that far, uh, but that'll work for what we're going to do. And the way this uh, experiment works is you're just going to take these skewers and or pencils and jam them through the bag. So you've got pointy end, so you're just going to push them through and push them through both sides where the water's at. Same thing with the pencil. So jam it through and you want to do it pretty quick. You don't want to do it real slow. Um, if you need to, you can give it a little twist and that'll help you get it through. So the first part of the experiment is just to see how it works. If you don't want to waste another Ziploc bag, you can actually go ahead and move on through the steps. So you can skip uh, step four and step five. And uh, you can go ahead and guess how many skewers or pencils you think are going to um, be able to go through the bag before it causes a major leak. Uh, major leak means that you're getting more than a drip per second, which right now, if you're watching mine, they are dripping but they're dripping pretty slowly. So you want to go ahead and when you're ready, start putting skewers or pencils through the bag until you get those major leaks, All right? And then snap a picture of your bag with your skewers or pencils in it, um, stick it in your document and answer the questions that are related to this section. So the next procedure is with polar polymers. Polar polymers are any sort of polymer that has a charge. Remember earlier in this chemistry section, we talked about polars, uh, I'm sorry, polar molecules. Those are any things that have any molecules that end up having a slightly positive or slightly negative charge. Well, polar polymers are polymer molecules that have a slightly positive or slightly negative charge. And polar polymers like instant snow, which you have a little bag in your kit of instant snow, are going to be attracted to water. So what you're going to do with this experiment is you need some sort of bowl to mix in. So I've got my bowl. You're going to need some measuring tools. So you're going to need a quarter cup measuring cup. You're going to need a teaspoon and you're going to need a quarter teaspoon. You're going to need some warm water. So you've got more instant snow in your baggie than you need. So go ahead and measure out a quarter teaspoon of instant snow and put that in your bowl. And set that aside. Now you're going to measure a quarter cup of water and pour that in the bowl. And you should see it kind of turn into a gel pretty quickly. And I've lost my spoon. Ah, yeah, we'll just use one of my measuring spoons. So you should see this kind of gel uh, form. What you want to do is start stirring it around. And that will make your snow. So you get that gel first and then you should get this sparkly type snow. And if you stir it and break it up, it should start really looking like snow. All right. And remember, you started with a quarter of a teaspoon of the instant snow and just added a quarter of a cup of water. So this is able to hold a lot of water. So what you're going to do now, as you can see there in the directions, is you're going to start to add more water to it and keep track of how much water you add. 
So you're gonna add it in and that's why you need the teaspoon. You're gonna add it in at a teaspoon at a time, add a teaspoon in and then mix it up, add a teaspoon in, mix it up and you keep adding it until it's back to that gel type look and that tells you that it's getting close to the maximum amount of water it can hold. If it was actually kind of watery, that means it's hit its maximum. We don't want to do that. Um, so when it gets back to looking like a gel, like that clear gel and almost watery, then that means you know it's hit its maximum. And I'll show you that here through the magic of video um, here in a minute so that you can see what that would look like. Then you want to write down how much water could your snow hold. So remember, it starts with a quarter cup. And so you want to look up how much a quarter cup is in milliliters. And then how many teaspoons, multiply that by how many milliliters are in a teaspoon and add it all together. That will be how much water a quarter of a teaspoon of this instant snow polymer can hold. Now, this instant snow polymer that you're using is the same type of polymer that's found in baby diapers. So you might now understand why it's found in baby diapers. So I'm back with my instant snow that I've added my water to. I'm not going to tell you how many teaspoons I added, but this is what it should look like uh, when you get close to the maximum it can hold. If you look, when I drag my spoon through it, you can see the water kind of trailing behind it. It looks very much like the gel it started out with, but a little goopier. So this is what it should look like when you get to that edge of where it can't hold any more water. And then, like I said, if you want to play with it, you can go ahead and dump the rest of your snow from your baggie in here. It will pretty much almost immediately start soaking up the water, stir it in really, really well. Now I have a little less snow than you will because I was practice or I did some experimenting with this earlier. So yours will dry out a little bit more than mine, make it a little easier to play with. All right, so that is the instant snow polar polymers activity. The last activity is the polymers activity looking at different fabric polymers. So in your kit, you've got some pieces already. So I've pulled out the wool piece of fabric. Uh, you also have cashmere, which is the small pink purple uh, piece of fabric that's in your kit. You also have in your kit one of these little hand lenses. So go ahead and, and wrap that. Um, you can use this hand lens you can uh, on its own. You could also use this hand lens in combination with your uh, camera on your cell phone. Uh, if you can uh, get it kind of taped over the camera, the big lens uh, magnifies um, less than the little lens. So this one is going to magnify, I think it's times 15. So this one's going to give you a better view. And what you want to do is use this lens to be able to observe different types of fabric polymers. Most of the fabrics that we wear are actually from either synthetic polymers or natural polymers. And so this wool, this is 100% wool, so it is 100% natural polymer. The cashmere uh, piece that you have is 100% cashmere, so it is 100% natural. You will need to find, as you see in the directions, um, at least one synthetic fiber to observe. And it needs to be 100%. So a lot of materials are mixes. So um, anything like nylon, polyester, rayon, acrylic are going to work for a synthetic. And then you'll need to find uh, one more. So you're looking for a total of four. So you need to look at a total of four different types of polymers. And what you're going to be looking at, and this is why you need the hand lens, you're going to be looking at things like 
I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, um, but you're going to be using the hand lens to look at things like how the fibers are woven together. So if you look at your um, chart there, you need to tell me what the fabric name is. Is it natural or synthetic? Texture. So what does it feel like to you? Right. Um, well, no, I'm sorry, that's feel of the fabric. Texture is what does it look like? So does it look smooth and bumpy or rough? And you, so you can use your hand lens to do that. Some of them are woven large enough that you can see it with the naked eye. But this hand lens can really help as far as uh, telling you some information as far as texture. Uh, the sheen of the fabric, is it dull or is it shiny? So for example, this wool, this would be considered obviously dull, right? Versus um, something that would be shiny, like sateen would be something that would be much shinier. The hand lens is gonna help you figure out things like size of threads. So are the threads big and thick compared to another sample or are they super tiny? So, you know, can you see the individual threads using the big lens or do you have to use the little lens to be able to really observe individual threads? And then consistency of color. So are the, you know, on this wool, this wool looks like it was meant to be multiple colors, but on the individual colors, so are all of the greens the same green? Um, you know, if you're looking at, for example, a piece of polyester, is the color consistent through the whole piece of fabric or does it change? So that's what you're looking for in this last part with the different fabric polymers. And that wraps up the Polymer Lab. If you have any questions, you can always shoot me an email or stop in during office hours.